this is guerrilla warfare. This was not like regular lines of battle where you were fighting, or in the Pacific when it was island by island. These guys were popping up all over the place doing, doing different things. Yeah, my name is Tom Dillon, Thomas Dillon, I guess. Um, I was in the United States Marine Corps, uh, Buck Sergeant. I was uh, what they call an O-1, which was the leader of a striker team. This has got a wintergreen uniform and, and the utilities. These are in the Marine Corps, they call them covers, but they're hats, caps, whatever. This one belonged to my father, and this one is mine. I don't think it, <laughs> I don't think it fits much anymore. <laughs> Oh, I, I was excited. I, I also actually I joined in the Marines because my father was in the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. And I thought that might be something that would bring us a little bit closer together. But you know, at the time, you know, you're going to be going to war, possibly going to war, possibly you're being killed, but also a little bit, bit of gung-ho, you know, we're going to go mm -hmm. kick some ass and, and, and uh, win, win the war, you know? Mm -hmm. I remember sitting there and said, oh, Michael's safe, oh, Howard's going, <laughs> you know, my, my relative. There's a bridge that goes to Paris Island and a big red and gold sign, you are now entering the United States Marine Corps Training Depot, Paris Island. What you had when you got getting off the bus were, were yellow feet and, you know, you will go out there and each of you stands on the yellow feet, it's, you know, the feet are like 45 degree angle. The position, assume the position of attention. You have eight seconds, you have 10 seconds. Eight of them are gone. Go! <laughs> you know? And that was like the first day. What, what the fuck did I do? In boot camp, you had to stand at the position of attention whenever you weren't training, whenever you weren't doing anything. And reading that red book, like so, and read it, and then you would turn the page, and then you'd back, back to the position of attention, turn the page and read it. In the beginning, I think everybody was for the war. Maybe a few people were against it, but they were for the war. You had a period of time, it was scary to live in the United States. We were in school, little kids, second, first grade, second grade, third grade, whatever you were. We had a thing where you got in the hallway and you sat down, you crawled in the hallway with your, your head covered. The, the country was afraid of the commies. Right? What were the communists going to do? Khrushchev was crazy. Mutually assured destruction is what the term was, you know? You know, press the button, I'm going to teach you a lesson here, but I'm going to teach you a lesson too. We would surveil them, they would fly over us and look to see what kind of nuclear bombs you were building. Although some of it you could see from aerial photography, a lot of it you couldn't because you had the, the triple canopy. You had so many trees and things growing over, you couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. That's why you had to have guys on the ground actually eyeballing, what are they doing? So we would go out there to blow things up and find out their locations, attack them if, if it was possible. <laughs> It started after the first Tet, 68 Tet. As more information was coming out, like I say, that Westmoreland knew <laughs> that these cities were attacked be beforehand. You gave half of these people up. They, the Vietnamese weren't being drafted, but yet we were. You know, and, and right after Tet, he was more demanding 48,000 more troops be sent in there. When, when you knew these battles were coming, you know, this was being set up. And we also called things police actions instead of a war. Mm. You know, and I, I think that gives you a different mindset, you know, and Westmoreland allowed the politics to do more, you know, don't fire until you get permission to be fi fire back, you know. But what kind of BS is that? Communications was bad, there was no communications. And you got the guys with the ham radio, Right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're like the, the silent heroes. Because they, I don't know how they do it. But they would connect with your, your parents' home through the ham radio. Mm -hmm. Ham radio network. Oh. 
But I remember getting on the on the on the radio. Hello, Dad. <laughs> oh, I'm alive. We're you know we're still hanging out here. <laughs> Let us tell those who fought in that war that we will never again ask young men to fight and possibly die in a war our government is afraid to let them win. The, the, the war is lost. You can't win this thing with, with these tactics. Mm -hmm. You knew it was winding down. Mm -hmm. It was winding down because we were giving up. That, that uniform was a PFC, Private First Class. You as a sergeant. Well, I was, I was very happy that I was going home. Mm -hmm. I mean, I... <laughs> very happy. In a single day, over 31,000 returning Yanks enter New York Harbor. The homecoming heroes swarm the decks of the big liner for a first glimpse of the skyline. It, it was worth it. We should have fought for them. You know, sort of communism, the way we all thought, sort of communism doesn't spread. Like the, the country just changed. I remember going into Gannon's bar. My, 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 one time I'm home and I'm a hero. How are you doing? Everyone's buying me drinks. The next time, they called their baby children asking you to leave the bar. But mentally. Mentally, I'm wiped out. My life is a total shambles. About a hundred jobs, uh, four times in jail, uh, a divorce, a wife who was unfaithful and left me. I have my own blood brother, born from the same mother, will not have anything to do with me because I am a stupid, crazy Vietnam vet. My member. I remember coming home and my mother, my mother had a big sign across the whole house. Welcome home, Tommy. Big sign from the crotch to the end of the house. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. And then see my father at the airport. And he looked like an old man. He had old gray hair now. Probably from worrying about, probably from worrying about me. And then uh, the people were against the military. They spit at you, you know. They try to trip you, <laughs> you know, if you're carrying your sea bag. Uh, I don't know anyone that killed killed a kid or, or anything like that. Boy, you know, I even looking back of my life the last few years, you know, with the things that I've done good and, and, and proud of and things that the mistakes that I made, you know, can you go back and change that mistake? Well, you can't, you know, life goes on, the clock goes on. You gotta do what you gotta do. What do you think is right? Go where your heart leads you and you'll be happy, you know. Especially the pilots. Boy. Style their hat like that. Mm -hmm. And the New Jersey State Troopers mm -hmm. had their hat.